Venezuela, President Nicolás Maduro received the official results of the referendum in defense of the escape of hell on Sunday, which ended up with an overwhelming yes victory. In Palestine's rally forces intensified their total search against the civilian population of the Gaza Strip, leaving dozens dead. In Tanzania, at least 68 people have been reported killed, and many more feared traveling the debris following landslides and flooding triggered by heavy rainfall or rain rainfall. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Rosabal from the Telesu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro received the official results of the referendum in defense of the Esquivo held on Sunday, which ended up with an overwhelming yes victory. The ceremony began with a presentation of the official voting results for the president of the National Interim Council, Elvis Amoroso, who handed a record with this data to the Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro and to the president of the National Assembly, Jorge Rodríguez. During his speech, Maduro highlighted the importance of the referendum turnout as during that it marks the beginning of the recovery of the Esquivo. He also detailed that in the last 24 years, 30 elections have been held in the country, several of which were consultative referendums. During his speech, Nicolás Maduro emphasized that through democracy is to consult the people, which was explicitly expressed in the consultative referendum with the Venezuelan people. Commander Chávez surprised us all by summoning the, refer the consulta consultative referendum for, for all uh, uh, poses of popular election. It was a big surprise. Consult the people, it's democracy. democracy. President Nicolás Maduro also affirmed that they will go ahead with the referendum since the voice of the people was expressed in the final results and that this will be the path they will take in all future actions. And I said to those trying to to stand the referendum and of not uh, recognizing the people to, to that uh, right of Exxon Mobil, to that uh, those financing the Guyanese government. So we will go forward this binding, this binding referendum. The voice of the people is the God of, do of God is sacred and it was manifested, expressed on December 3rd. And that's the route, the track I am going to follow uh, on, the, on all my actions ahead. The president of the National Interior Council, Elvis Amoroso, in the act, a notification of the will of the Venezuelan people in the consultative referendum in defense of the territory of Guyana, Kiva, congratulated the Venezuelan people for their participation in the referendum and expressed his pride in the final results. Well, for us, it's a, re a, re a real honor to be here today in front of the Venezuelan people with a smile and a, a very good satisfaction for having completed yesterday the referendum, which it gives again the, the, the right of to the Venezuelan people of defending that territory. So we, we can say proudly that the Esequibo has no further any stripes. For his part, the President of the National Assembly of Venezuela, Jorge Rodriguez, emphasized that December 3rd was a milestone in the history of Venezuela and a great victory for its people. 
On Sunday 3rd, there was uh, a very, uh, a very, uh, it was a, a landslide victory because uh, the Venezuelan people got, uh, went to the streets to, to express uh, yes to this uh, consultative referendum on the Esequibo territory. Peru's constitutional court ruled on Monday on a habeas corpus petition in favor of former president Pedro Castillo. The former president of Peru, Castillo, spoke this Monday in a judicial hearing held almost a year after the departure from power. During the public hearing of the plenary of the constitutional court, Castillo ratified that on December 7, 2022, he was arrested on the pretext of having committed the crime of fragrancy. The president also pointed out that the Attorney General of the Nation, Patricia Benavides, is being investigated for presumably being the leader of a criminal organization. In Mexico, the fifth cycle of peace talks between the government of Colombia and the National Liberation Army began. In this regard, the Mexican foreign minister issued a communique with red and its permanent commitment to the promotion of peace and security in the region. It was reported that both parties will continue to be accompanied by delegations from countries such as Brazil, Chile, Cuba, Norway, and Venezuela, in addition to the representation of the UN Secretary General and the Colombian Bishop Conference. The participants emphasized their hoped that this new round of negotiations will open the way to a definite and lasting solution to the Colombian conflict. Let's take a short break. But remember, you can join us on TikTok at Tales in English, follow the fun news in different formats, see your days, and more. Our study is coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. Israeli forces intensified the total siege against the civilian population of the Gaza Strip, leaving dozens dead. On Monday night, Palestinian media announced that the Israeli Air Force generated belts of fire after attacking homes located in the city of Khan Yunis, south of the Basij Palestinian enclave. The report that at least seven citizens were killed and dozens of wounded were transferred to the Nasser Hospital. The occupation planes also shelled the house in their al Bala, leaving several victims. Since last October 7th, Israeli has killed nearly 16,000 Palestinians, including 6,150 children, while more than 38,000 people were wounded. At least 50 civilians were killed and hundreds of others injured in a series of Israeli strikes that targeted to school children and displaced persons in the al neighborhood in Gaza City. According to local authorities, Israeli warplanes and artillery shelled the Salah Adin school run by the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees as well as the Marcher Assad Saftawi school in al neighborhoods, which led to the killing of around 50 displaced people and the injury of hundreds of others. Dozens of bodies and injured were reportedly brought to Al Ali Arab Hospital in the nearby Al Zaytun neighborhood. On the other hand, ambulance crews reported that they are facing great difficulties in reaching the two schools to evacuate bodies and injured as a result of the intense rally shelling against the area. The Palestinian Ministry of Communications said Monday that communication services, including fixed main lines, mobiles, and internet, were cut off for the first time in Gaza City and in Northern Strip as a result of the ongoing Israeli aggression. The CEO of the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, Late Data West, called on international unions and bodies to respond to the warnings that were previously made to maintain the continuity of communication and internet services amid the difficult humanitarian conditions and the identification of shells by the Israeli occupation against the Strip. Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed Sayed called on the European Parliament to pressure Israel 
to stop its aggression against Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip, West Bank and Jerusalem. The Prime Minister made these remarks during the meeting in Ramallah with a delegation from the European Parliament. Jared called on the European entity to pressure Israel to stop all attempts to displace Palestinians to open the crosses leading to the Gaza Strip and to allow the entry of medical and relief and all fuel as well as restoring electricity and water in that area. The high Palestinian official stressed that Netanyahu's and uh, previously Israel governments have been waving the war against all the Palestinian components including land, people and authority in Gaza and the West Bank and trying to systematically destroy the possibility of establishing a Palestinian state within 1967 borders with Jerusalem and its capital. The president of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canel, urged on Monday to continue developing projects in the scientific area with Iran during a visit to a Pasteur Institute in Tehran. During the tour of the Pasteur Institute, the Escanel highlighted its work as a scientific center of excellence, which demonstrates that collaboration is the model to follow when it comes to the health of our people. Within the framework, the Cuban president's official visit to Iran, a contract for the transfer of knowledge and vaccines and memorandum of understanding for strategic cooperation between Pasteur Institute of Iran and the Finland Institute of Cuba for the clinical and preclinical developments of immunizers were signed. Moreover, the president held official talks with his counterpart, Sayyid Ibrahim Raisi, and met with the president of the Islamic Consultative Assembly of Iran, Mohammad Baguer. On Monday, the Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz, received Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the occasion of the government consultations between the two countries. The German Chancellor urged all parties to find a way to close a long negotiated trade deal between the European Union and the South American bloc Mercosur. The Brazilian president, alluding to the trade agreement, said he will not give up on the trade deal and ask the European Union to decide if he is really interested in selling it. The EU and Mercosur agreed on the broad outlines of a possible free trade agreement in June 2019 after two decades of tough negotiations, but they still have to add the final details to the deal. The European Commission negotiated on behalf of the 27 EU countries and Brazil, which currently chairs Mercosur, had high hopes of sealing the agreement definitely admitted to be held in Rio de Janeiro on December 7th. Russian President Vladimir Putin tells European ambassadors that Germany suffers the most from frozen relations with Russia. Putin said at the ceremony is hearing the new ambassador of foreign states that the first state of relations between Russia and Germany benefits neither country, but it's Germany who suffers the most. Putin recalled that Russia and Germany had been developing pragmatic, business-like cooperation for more than a half a century. The Russian president also said that the current state of Russian relations with Russia and not in his initiative, his stress, is not beneficial, it is not beneficial either for Germany or for Russia. Our country has no biased and more over hostile intentions towards anyone. And of course, we expect that all international partners in relations with us will adhere to the principles of equality and mutual consideration of interests. The National Assembly in France is preparing for a pivotal vote on Monday night on a bill to ban single use disposable electronic cigarettes, commonly known as puffs. Attracting teenagers with their sweet flavors, these devices are facing scrutiny for their environmental implications. The proposed legislation aims to protect young people's health and raise significant environmental concern. If passed by the National Assembly, it will proceed to the Senate, which hope to enforce the ban by the end of the summer. Disposable cigarettes are small battery-powered devices that deliver vaporized nicotine with various flavorings. They differ from reusable vaping devices in that they are not designed to be refilled or retouched, leading to concerns in France and beyond about their disposal. We have a second show break coming up, but before we invite you to join our website community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Because some news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Final short break, don't go away.
Welcome back. At least the CIA chief will have been reported killed and many more feared for up on the debris following landslide and flooding triggered by heavy rainfall in northern Tanzania. Torrential rains during the weekend washed away the vehicles and were down to buildings in the hillside town of Kadesh, some 300 kilometers north of the capital of Dodoma. According to Prime Minister Kassin Mahaoliwa, who visited the affected area, search and rescue operations were on the way with the help of military as people were feared, trapped or buried in a thick mud. At least 100 houses were reported by swallowed by the mud and a village with 28 families flattened. Tanzania and its African neighbors, Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia, are battling flat floods caused by torrential rains linked to El Nino weather pattern. The floods are exacerbating the humanitarian crisis in the region just as it emerged from the worst route in four decades that left millions of people hungry. In the United Kingdom, heavy snowfall wrecked havoc on motorists and the power supply of thousands of homes. Officials noted that the snow forced motorists to seek shelter or spend the night in their cars and left more than 2,500 customers without power. Cumbria Fire and Rescue Services reported that it worked through the night to get drivers out of the cars trapped in the snow. Similarly, Cumbria Police Superintendent Andy Wilkinson said the storm was more significant than expected and people were urged Sunday not to travel to the county. Guinea-Bissau President Omar Sissoko and Balo decided to dissolve the opposition-dominated parliament on Monday. The decision comes three days after armed clashes that he described as a coup attempt plunged to the small African country into another crisis. A presidential decree released to the press that the dates of the next legislative elections will be set at the appropriate time in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. President Ibalo invokes the complicity between the National Guard, a body involved in the clashes with the Presidential Guard on Tuesday night and Friday, and certain political interests within the state apparatus itself. Zimbabwe is in a state of emergency following a cholera outbreak that left 200 people dead and at least 9,000 active cases. Authorities reported that the spread of the outbreak is due to the consumption of water from untreated wells. Thus, the High Court of Zimbabwe ordered the Ministry of Local Government and Health to provide portable drinking water to the inhabitants of Harare to prevent a pandemic outbreak of the bacteria. The disease has spread to at least 17 districts in the country, but the city of Harare reports the highest mortality and infection rates. Egypt's space agency chief had hailed cooperation with China in the field of space technology, including establishing Egypt's satellite assembly center and building a remote sensing satellite. The CEO of the Egyptian space agency, Exa, Sharif Tekli, said in an interview with the China Global Television Network that Egypt's cooperation with China in the field of space technology has been successful with significant knowledge transfer and capacity building. Among the China helped Egypt send a remote sensing satellite into orbit from the Kuyan Satellite Launch Center in northeastern China. The satellite will be used in Egypt's land and resources utilization, water conservancy, agriculture, and other fields. So, using the satellite, we can monitor the, the urban development. We can determine the uh, changes in the water level in the river line, which is very important for us. We can monitor the agriculture, so we can uh, determine the crop distribution across the country, and, uh, which means that we can uh, build applications on the images, which means that we can task whatever we need within the country and within the region also. We can also serve Africa with this uh, satellite. The resolution of the satellite is uh, quite high as compared to, to the previous uh, civilian satellites that we have. Uh, so having a two-meter resolution will serve a broad sector of interest for the different uh, governmental entities and for the different users of the uh, satellite, satellite imagery. Likewise, Sheriff Zeri stated that this project is the beginning of the collaboration with China. The knowledge transfer that we have seen from the Chinese side is really, really uh, marvelous and uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, so this, this project is very, very successful. And so uh, it's a, it was a very good capacity building experience for us. Actually, we consider this project as the start of the collaboration with China. And actually are looking forward to deepening this collaboration and considering more uh, capitalization on the 
uh, experience that we gain from uh, master set two and from the AIT. So together we can just uh, do more uh, deepening of technology transfer and more work on uh, different types of satellites. And that's what our future plans and that's what we are planning to discuss together with the Chinese part uh, just to continue this collaboration uh, for the benefit of both countries, China and Egypt. And we have come to the end of this brief, but before saying goodbye, we want to thank our Caribbean audience, especially the audience for tuning down to Vego. We are pleased to share our newscast and contribute to provide an alternative news source of the latest world events. You can find this so many other stories on our website at tosurenglish.net and join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For those English, I'm Ana Rosabal. Thank you for watching.